Hello everyone and welcome back. The previous session was dedicated to the study of subtraction and diminished radix complement. In this session, we will learn about the subtraction in radix complement. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will first observe the logic of subtraction in radix complement, followed by some example problems, and finally, we will observe the summary of subtraction in radix complement. Let's begin with the subtraction in radix complement. Here also, for the sake of simplicity, we will observe the logic with the help of decimal or base 10 number system. Now, since the base is 10 for decimal, therefore, the radix complement of the same would be 10's complement. Let's observe the subtraction 76 minus 31 using 10's complement. Basically, this subtraction would be performed as the addition between 76 and minus 31 or the negative inverse of 31. Now, unlike the previous session, this time we are supposed to use the formula of radix complement. That is, b raised to the power n minus a, where a is the value 31. In the previous sessions, we have observed that radix complement can be found in another way. That is, the 10th complement of 31 can be obtained if we know the 9th complement of 31 and add 1 to it. Just like the last session, if we subtract 31 from 99, we will obtain the 9th complement value 68. Adding 1 to it, we will obtain the 10th complement value of 31, 69. Now, in place of negative inverse of 31, we will now place 69. Let's perform the addition now. So, 6 plus 9 is 15. So, we will have 5 as sum and 1 as the carry. Now, 1 plus 7 is 8 and 8 plus 6 is 14. So, we obtain the result 145. Now, notice carefully, if we consider 76 as m, then 69 would be considered as the negative inverse of n because n is 31. Since we are dealing with radix complement, therefore the negative inverse of n is to be calculated as 10 squared minus n. And the reason for this is the n or 31, that is the subtrahend, is a number of base 10 and also a two digit number. So adding these two, the result we obtained is actually 100 plus m minus n. Confused? Let me ease it up. Observe. Assuming they both are n digit numbers, the subtraction of m and n is actually performed as m plus n's complement. Since we are following the procedure of radix complement, we are actually performing m plus b raised to the power n minus n. This is what we get as the negative inverse of n following the radix complement way. Now rearranging the terms, we get b raised to the power n plus m minus n. Now, notice carefully, m and n both are n-digit numbers, correct? And we also know that the maximum value to be represented by any n-digit number is b raised to the power n minus 1. Now, we already have b raised to the power n in here. So, if the subtraction of m and n derives a positive value, this entire result will generate the carry, which in this case was this 10 squared or 100. So, we will just discard it and see, it is the result 45. So, in the subtraction using radix complement, this b raised to the power n will be the reason behind the occurrence of carry only if m minus n results in a positive value. And in such cases, we will just discard the carry. Let's explore the other side. Let's perform the subtraction 31 minus 76. Here also, the subtraction will be performed as 31 plus minus 76 or the negative inverse of 76. This negative inverse, that is the 10th complement of 76, can be obtained if at first we calculate the 9th complement of 76 and then add 1 to it. Now, 9 minus 6 is 3 and 9 minus 7 is 2. Therefore, 9th complement of 76 is 23 and 23 plus 1 is 24 which is the 10th complement of 76. Let's use this. Alright, let's now perform the addition, shall we? So, 1 plus 4 is 5 and 3 plus 2 is also 5. So, if we consider this as m, 
then 24 is naturally the tens complement of n obtained by performing the tens squared minus n. Therefore, this result 55 is actually 100 plus m minus n. Earlier we saw that if we perform subtraction of two n digit numbers following the radix complement procedure, we eventually end up getting b raised to the power n plus m minus n. Now using n bits, we can at max represent the value b raised to the power n minus 1. Observe this. Even if m minus n results in 0, we will still obtain b raised to the power n which cannot be accommodated using n digits. That means, even if the result of subtraction is 0, we will still obtain the carry. Now here we didn't obtain any carry, so clearly the result m minus n is a negative value. It has to be. So when we don't obtain any carry, it is obvious that our obtained result is in radix complement form. We need to perform the radix complement to get the result in our familiar form. So let's do so. So we are performing tens complement of 100 plus m minus n, which is actually the tens complement of 55, which can also be stated as ninth complement of 55 plus 1. Now remember, here the m and n, that is 31 and 76 respectively, both are two digit decimal numbers. So the tens complement of 100 plus m minus n can be performed as 10 squared minus 100 plus m minus n. Here, this is the value whose negative inverse we are looking for using radix complement method. On the other hand, 9's complement of 55 is 44, so in the right hand side we will have 44 plus 1. Now if we get rid of the parenthesis, we will obtain 100 minus 100 minus m minus n, won't we? This minus basically changed the signs of this 100 and this plus before m minus n. In the right hand side, we are having 45. Now these hundreds will cancel themselves out. So we are left with minus m minus n equals 45. Or in other words, m minus n equals minus 45, which actually is the result of 31 minus 76. So while performing m minus n in radix complement, if the result doesn't generate any carry, we become certain that m minus n resulted in a negative value. So we need to perform radix complement on the result and finally we'll place the negative sign in front of the obtained value to achieve the form which is familiar to us. So this is the logic behind the subtraction in radix complement. Now let's go through some example problems involving the base 2 or binary number system. Let's calculate the subtraction 1101 minus 1010. Now in case of binary, since the base is 2, the radix complement is 2's complement. So with 1101, we will add the 2's complement of 1010. During the session complementary number systems examples, we learned a shortcut way to determine the 2's complement, didn't we? Basically, we will move from the LSB to the MSB and while doing so, we will keep retaining the bits as they are until we encounter 1. Once 1 is encountered, we will retain it as it is, but thereafter the bits should be toggled. So in case of 1010, 0 and 1 will be retained. Now after 1, these bits will have to be toggled. That is, 0 will become 1 and this 1 will be 0. So the 2's complement of 1010 is 0110. Let's perform the addition now. So 1 plus 0 will be 1. Then 0 plus 1 will also be 1. Now 1 plus 1 is 2, which in binary is 1 0. So we get the sum as 0 and the carry as 1. Now 1 plus 1 would be 1 0 and 1 0 plus 0 will result in 1 0. Since it is subtraction using 2's complement, so we are just going to discard the carry. So the result of 1101 minus 1010 is 0011. Let's now calculate 1010 minus 1101. So this time with 1010, we will add the 2's complement of 1101. Observe, this is the first one while going from LSB to MSB. So we will retain it as it is. Now the rest will have to be toggled. So this 0 will be 1 and these two 1's will become zeros. Let's perform the addition now. 
So, 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 will give us the sum as 0 and 1 will be given as carry. Now, 1 plus 0 plus 0 is simply 1 and finally 1 plus 0 will produce 1. Notice, no carry. So, what does it mean? It means the obtained result is of negative magnitude. So, to bring it to the familiar form, we will have to perform 2's complement on it. Let's do that. So, this is the first one. Let's retain it as it is. Now, the rest will have to be toggled. So, 0 becomes 1 and the 1's will become zeros. Now, all we have to do is add the negative sign in front of it. So, the result of 1010 minus 1101 is minus 0011. This is how subtraction using 2's complement is done for binary numbers. Now, before concluding this session, let's quickly summarize the entire procedure. So, the subtraction of two unsigned numbers m minus n where n is not equals to 0 in base b can be done as follows. First, we will add m with the b's complement or radix complement of n that is m plus b raised to the power n minus n which will produce b raised to the power n plus m minus n. Now, if m minus n is greater than or equal to 0, the sum will be produced with an n carry that is b raised to the power n which will just be discarded to produce m minus n. Now, if m minus n is lesser than 0, then the sum will not produce an end carry. Now, to obtain the result in familiar form, we need to apply B's complement on the sum and place a negative sign in front. So, in this session, we first saw the logic of subtraction in radix complement, then we observed couple of example problems in binary. Finally, we went through the summary of subtraction in radix complement. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe various representations of binary numbers. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.